Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and yes, I'm wearing my brand new t-shirt that I got for Christmas, that's from the movie The Sandlot, that features one of my favorite characters of the film, Ham Porter, who's played by Patrick Renna, and he says that famous line, You're killing me, Smalls! <laughs> yeah, he had a baseball bat too. Well anyway, it's been a while since I've done my last movie review, which is uh, two... Christmas horror films, both original and remake of the same title, Black Christmas, and I also did the video for Facebook of the best and worst films of 2016 list. But now I'm finally going to review a film that I just picked up just recently at Best Buy, and it was surprising enough almost cost me an arm and a leg. And it's a film that came out on March 21st, 1986. It's a movie that I saw as a kid. Yes, I think you already guessed it now. Chopping Mall. Which is also known as Killbots uh, when it was first released. But unfortunately, the parents and their kids had got confused thinking that this was going to be a kid's movie. Because the, the poster actually shows... All the security robots, which they're, which they use to install for the shopping mall, so they can use them for um, for burglars that are actually robbing the place. They thought this was just going to be like any other kind of Transformers-like um, children's film, but it isn't because it's a horror movie where teenagers are in jeopardy. Because we often get a lot of teenagers in Jeopardy horror films uh, back in the 80s. Yeah, with uh, the Friday the 13th movies and all of that. But this is a really simple horror film that's um, really rare these days to be set in a shopping mall. Only this time you get security robots that turn evil. And they go around terrorizing all the teenagers that actually work there. They decided to have an overnight party, you know, hanging around, you know, doing drugs, you know, having sex, and all of that. Until we get into the action. And there you go. And this is a very nice Blu-ray uh, slipcover that they got. And it's a brand new Blu-ray release from Lionsgate that's part of the Restaurant Video Collector Series. And for those who don't know what Best Room Video is, well, think of it like it's uh, Anchor Bay or Shop Factory that they started releasing a variety of genre movies along with uh, uh, workout videos, children's programming specials, uh, TV shows, um, concerts, um, you name it, all of this stuff. And they release a tons of variety of of libraries uh, to choose from that they also had to deal with other studios to release them and they they've been around since the 80s all the way until the 90s when live entertainment had bought them from bankruptcy because Restaurant also had a, a film division called Restaurant Video which would later release the film Dirty Dancing one of the most successful films to date they also had a sub diary uh, company called Lightning Video, which happens to release Chopping Mall. And of course, Lionsgate had put out the 2004 DVD release that's basically the same transfer. We were stuck with it because uh, they were under legal limbo, so they didn't have uh, any choice to release this movie in widescreen and better quality. But which we now finally have. So this is the first time we finally get to see this movie in widescreen in a very solid um, transfer presentation even though it still has film grain. Well it's meant to have that. And it has all these um, dirt and um, some some circles uh, that often shown at some scenes and even some of the sound well only for just one scene is uh, drawn out but it goes back to it so that that was just a technical error right there from from its film source 
So, but either way, it, it makes the movie look even better now than it was when it was previously released. And plus, it also has uh, new extras, uh, a new commentary by director and co-writer Jim Winoski, that's on the back, which includes um, actress uh, Kelly Mahoney, the, the lead girl in the film, with co-writer and second unit director Steve Mitchell. Yeah, this is a new commentary. They also include the, the 2004 commentary from the DVD release, because that was the only extra they had, along with the theatrical trailer. And they also added some new commentary with historians and authors Nathan Neal Thompson and Ryan Turek. has an isolated score track and new featurettes, which includes Back to the Mall, Chopping Chopping Mall, The Killbots, Scoring Chopping Mall, The Robot Speaks, The Lost Scene, Army of One, and Chopping Mall Creating the Killbots. Awesome. Yeah, what, some of them actually run at 30 minutes. Other times they just run at different types of minutes, but I think they did a great job. And I love the extras that they got, so we got to see some of the original cast, you know, already grown up already. You know, they're now getting older as we speak. And, of course, the movie was shot in mono, as we know it, so I'm glad they kept that in for, for digital. So it, it makes this movie sound even better. And it looks better, too with this awesome glossy slip cover and yes it also has this as well without the, the tag on top of it yeah anyway I saw this movie back on Cinemax back in the late 80's and I think I also saw it on USA Network as well and before I started getting the the 2004 DVD copy of the film so I'm glad to see that I finally got a very rare copy it deserves and I know Best Drum Video is going to start releasing other titles as well since they just released uh, the movie that Lightning Pictures have released called uh, uh, Blood Diner and they also released uh, the first two Waxworth movies and they're also going to be releasing Parents which that's a movie I'm really looking forward to getting and all these other films that's coming out, even The Gate. So I'm glad. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get to the review. It stars Kelly Mahoney, who's been best known for playing the cheerleader in Fast Times of Richmond High. She was also in the film Night of the Comet with Catherine Mary Stewart from the film The Last Starfighter, Tony O'Dell. Russell Todd, Carrie Emerson, Barbara Crampton, Nick Segal, John Tereski, Susie Slater, with uh, cameo appearances by Paul Bartel, Mary Womanall, yeah, both of them were in the movie Eating Wai Yao, which, by the way, they played the characters again. Angela Ames and Dick Miller. It's written by Jim Wanowski and Steve Mitchell and it's directed by, once again, Jim Wanowski. He's been best known for doing all these um, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and today of all these low budget films, even the ones that he worked with with Roger Corman. He did a lot of variety films like Sorceress and all these other kind of films that he has done. He even did uh, the sequel to Swamp Thing called The Return of Swamp Thing. I hope that gets a release someday. And many others. In fact, he just recently did the direct-to-video film A Dog on Christmas and Nessie and Me. Yeah, so there you go. The movie begins set inside a futuristic shopping mall in California known as the Park Plaza Mall which by the way is actually the Sherman Oaks Galleria in Sherman Oaks, California the same mall that actually shot 
every single film in the 80s, such as Fast Times of Richmond High, Valley Girl, Commando, you know, just to name a few. Which I know outside of the movie, um, which they started the intro, was actually uh, shot at the Belby Center in Belby Hills, California, which is just only the exterior shot. But inside the mall, it's just simply Sherman Oaks Galleria, so they I guess they wanted to make it as futuristic as possible. And I thought it worked. Well, anyway, they just installed a state-of-the-art security system, which they use all the security shutters across all exits, and he added free high-tech security robots known simply as Killbots. They did an instruction video where they held a public meeting of one of the robots capturing a thief who had just robbed some jewelry inside a jewelry store he had just broken into and got caught by getting tased and captured and that's when we saw the robot actually saying the line that's been said throughout. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. And that deeper voice, of course, was done not other than co-writer and director Jim Wanowski, you know, who directed this movie. And I gotta say, he did a very good job creating that deeper voice. But, yeah, unfortunately I can't do that voice very well because it actually hurts my throat. <laughs> A little bit, but hey, I try. But it definitely was uh, a memorable moment right there. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> that way. Well, also in the meeting, when we got introduced to all these robots, down below you actually got to meet two couples that are actually from the movie Eating While Yo. Paul and Mary Bland, you know, both played by Paul Bartell and Mary Womanall, you know, just you know, criticizing, you know, poking fun at one of the robots, and and they also tell them exactly what what do they do, and how they stop them, and all that particular sorts here and there. Well, this is before we got introduced to uh, the four couples that's inside the shopping mall that they all work in. You have four girls um, by the name of Linda, Susie, Leslie, and Allison, and four guys, yeah, Rick, Greg, Mike, and Ferdy. They one of them actually work inside a fast food restaurant, while the others just work inside uh, one of these stores. Yeah, like a clothing store or, or any kind. Well, their plan was to actually held an overnight party inside a furniture store. You know, just to have sex, have a couple drinks, and even lay down, even watching an old school horror film. Which, by the way, they were watching a, a Roger Corman film um, on TV. That is until a lightning storm strikes several times and actually damaged the computer controls through all the security robots, you know, kill bots, and they wound up turning deadly and evil and they actually wound up killing all the technicians. Yeah, one of the technicians of course was played by Garrett Graham. Yeah, he was actually reading a comic book and he then he found something suspicious. And they also killed a janitor who was actually played by Dick Miller. Yeah, because he's been best known for doing films like Gremlins and yeah, all the other John, Joe Dante films. And, of course, was in a film by Roger Corman, so it makes sense. After that, Mike and Leslie had left the furniture store, while Mike suddenly decided to show the identification to the robot you know, while getting undressed, until he was killed you know, while he was chewing his gum and being all cocky and everything by um, having his neck all snapped and was cut and then suddenly Leslie had spotted Mike already dead on the floor before being chased by the robot which has that famous scene in the movie as we know it the head decapitation scene where the killbot actually zapped her head 
and explodes. <laughs> yep, just like the other movie that came out the same year, Deadly Friend, where Samantha, um, who's now acting like a robot, actually killing um, Elvira, the neighbor next door, by throwing a basketball straight all over her head and got decapitated and explodes, yeah. But yeah, there were other several films that did the same thing in the 80s, such as uh, Scanners being one of them. And it seems like it's rather neat to actually see their heads being decapitated in a way. Yeah, having all their heads exploded. Yeah, and I, I know several films have done that too. And and God, e even that terrible Fan 4 stick started to do that too, even though the film was PG-13, by the way. Yeah, but it wasn't done very well, as far as I'm concerned. Well, anyway, so that's when all the teenagers had found out about that once they were both killed. So they tried to escape from all these security robots, which um, all the boys decided to go inside a sporting goods store, Peck and Paul. Yeah, which is named after the director, Sam Peck and Paul. They decided to grab all the firearms, the, the shotgun, yeah, with Ferdy actually grabbing the Magnum, yeah, which I know he even says that he saw <laughs> Dirty Harry 17 times, so he knows how to use it. <laughs> also has that awesome uh, dialogue with that quote that's said by Rick, saying, Let's send these fuckers a Rambo Graham. <laughs> so... The boys decided to shoot all their firearms uh, towards uh, all three of the security robots, and yeah, they're all zapping in. It was like a, a Western shootout all the way. <laughs> yeah, mix in. Yeah, it was like a it, it was like a Western shootout, and that's coming from a Western movie, and and it just it just works so many <laughs> it just works in so many levels. But yeah, of course they were, they had lousy shots, so. They almost got them. Well, the girls decided to go inside a hardware store just to get some propane, you know, just so they can actually kill those robots, and they tried. But they also decided to um, escape and hide out somewhere so they get rid of them. They tried to hide out inside the, the air conditioner chute, yeah, which, which you have Susie screaming and yelling, saying that line, we're going to be French fried. <laughs> so then they all fell and and all the robots were going around killing them one by one. Yeah, one of them actually got electrocuted. In fact, even the Susie and what's up on fire. Yeah, and all the others, you know, they 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 want to be using the propane inside the elevators so so that one robot can go inside and get killed. Yeah, they also try to to kill the, all the other robots by using the propane and all that. Yeah, they tried, but suddenly they come alive again. Yeah. Well, they continue to go on killing the robots uh, by hiding out. And unfortunately, they want to, yeah, I know Greg actually got thrown just when he was about to uh, stop the robot. Yeah, and got caught and thrown all the way uh, three stories high from the mall and he was killed. All the other girls had escaped and, and they take refugees inside a department store. So they started to set up by using all the mannequins pretending like they're actually them so so they can confuse them but of course Linda wound up getting killed by the robot and actually enrages Rick by driving a golf cart into the robot before Rick got electrocuted and was killed along with Linda and it was only Allison and Freddy that survived which Trudy got knocked unconscious, and Allison was trying to escape from one of them, hanging on to the ledge on the top floor before she fell off and landed. 
all the way down to a safe place where she injured her leg and went straight to the paint store by throwing all these paint cans around you know, waiting for the robot to come inside and that's when she brought in the dynamite and threw it all the way into the paint store just when she was about to say that classic line hey have a nice day and then explodes so already 3D had woken up being unconscious but of course his head was bleeding so he brought in some paper towels to cover it up and asked um, Allison hey nice shot and then the movie ends which also shows all the um, the end credits where you just basically see um, shots of of the cast and crew and all that <laughs> till the end I gotta say it was fun I really did enjoy this movie a lot ever since I saw this as a kid and, and I always remember all the memorable scenes in this movie too and all, all the line of dialogue that they use and also uh, I, I love that moment was when uh, in the movie Greg uh, was having sex with um, Susie and <laughs> and I remember he was quoting her that uh, that Susie smells like pepperoni and she says oh it, that's the way you feel no wait a minute I like pepperoni and and she says well in that case well she starts stripping taking off her clothes and you get to see her boobs <laughs> yeah love that moment I gotta say all, all the sex scenes seems rather <laughs> very amusing to, to watch but you get the idea but I love the cast too I mean Kelly Maroney was very tough um, as uh, Allison and definitely the right choice to play the role hey, Jim Ranowski did a great job casting her after appearing in Night of the Comet because you know, her character was rather similar to it I mean except she's not wearing the, the cheerleading outfit that she loves in, in the movie but I thought that was uh, awesome because she got to say that classic line Also, um, she even did most of her stunts, too, even though they did use some stunt doubles, um, especially for all the other actors, too. I thought that was really impressive. And also, the robots themselves are very well done, too. They, they actually created them that look like something out of a uh, one of those uh, robots that you see in all these sci-fi movies, you know, like those classic 50s-style films. Yeah, I, I love that futuristic style of those robots. I thought they work. I mean, they almost starting to look uh, a little bit like like spaceships right there, and that was cool that they created these. It almost makes you wish you had these robots too in your own home, especially with that deeper voice having to say "Thank you, have a nice day" in a way or any other. And I, I really loved that. And it's also great to see cameos of, of both uh, Paul and Mary uh, from the movie Eating While Y'all. I thought that worked so well, even though they were only there for the beginning of the movie. And the fact that you got to see uh, Dick Miller as a janitor. And in fact, his name was Walter uh, Paisley. Yeah, all the other uh, workers started making fun of him. Yeah, while he was just you know, mopping the floor until one of the robots came along. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, the the movie was beautifully shot. Uh, it took them 22 days to to actually shoot these scenes. You know, while having to use all the stunt work that they put into the film. Yeah, because I'm surprised it that took them that long to do so. I mean, even though it almost looked like this movie was shot in two days, but. But 22 days seems to be accurate, and it was shot in October of 1985, so that seems about right. It took them that long before the film was about to be released. 
Yeah, er everybody was good in the film. And they, they got also Tony O'Dell. You know, very rare to have uh, a nerdy kid who's not making fun of these days. But he's actually uh, there to help. And the rest of the... Yeah, even... Um, you got Susie just basically acting like a ballet girl. I mean, she was dressed like one too and all of that. And um, and all the rest of the people. And they, they got also Tony O'Dell. You know, very rare to have a, a nerdy kid who's not making fun of these days. But he's actually uh, there to help. And the rest of the... Yeah, even... Um, you got Susie just basically acting like a ballet girl. I mean, she was dressed like one too, and all of that. And um, and all the rest of the people. I also love the score that was done by Chuck uh, Carino. In fact, he did a lot of composing for other uh, Ronowski films that he did. But it just worked so well because I, I really love the theme that they use for well, whenever the robots appear and they try to stop them, it just, it just uh, feels as futuristic as possible. Yeah, even though the movie itself is, is filmed in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that Roger Corman uh, had his production company to release this is, is perfect enough to have all these films. Also, the fact that they even did the, uh, the cinematography by Leslie Rosenthal and he did a great job with these shots with editor uh, Leslie uh, Rosenthal and got producer um, Julie Corman but I guess the original version of the film that's 95 minutes long was actually the TV version uh, that did air it on USA Network so I think I knew I so it's been a long time since I've seen that version but all I know is that um, we only had 77 minutes of it. Definitely check this movie out. Choppy Mall is a great movie that Ronowski has done back in the 80s. I mean, the transfer looks amazing on the Blu-ray and has some great extras right there. An awesome commentary. Um, it's fun. Um, definitely go to your local uh, Best Buy or any other store and find a copy today. You'll definitely appreciate it. So anyway, I give Chopping Mall five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.